Some Baltimore City public high school and middle school students got to explore the Patapsco River aboard the Chesapeake Bay Foundation Snow Goose on a trip hosted by Baltimore Inner City Outings. Inner City Outings is a nonprofit volunteer organization that gets inner city kids outdoors. And today we're out with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation aboard the Snow Goose learning about the bay and the health of the bay and what we can do as citizens and students to make changes to the current status of the health of the bay. Chesapeake Bay Foundation uh, is running this trip and you know what as an organization we have a mission or a motto it's three words you might see it on a sticker you might see it on my clothes you might see it on Jocelyn's clothes what are we trying to do three words save the bay. we're trying to save the bay after introductions students got to observe the inner harbor as the snow goose headed out toward the Francis Scott Key Bridge so we started off our day with talking about the way that we use water and how that could potentially impact the Patapsco, which then has an impact on the Chesapeake Bay as a whole. So um, basically, things that happen on the land do come down to the river eventually and it all impacts it. And that can have an effect on the biodiversity because it could kill off a certain type of plant that maybe a one type of fish likes to eat. Do you all know what plankton is? Yes. Yeah, I do. What is it? It's a yeah, it's bacteria. Okay. How many of you have seen Spongebob? Me. Well, yeah. And you all know Plankton, the guy with the evil eye, I mean, well, the evil guy with the eye in the middle of his head? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's actually based off of a real animal that's in the water called a copepod. Can you all say copepod? Copepod. Copepod. Now say it three times fast. Ready? Copepod. 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 And we're going to see if we can catch any plankton. While students waited for the plankton net to come back, they took a look at a map of the Chesapeake Bay watershed. This one is all about the bay 400 years ago. And who explored it? And then this is what it looks like today. So you can compare and contrast. Students then formed groups and did some mapping activities of their own. They were then told to think about and write down what they thought a watershed was. I want you to imagine that this is the wall of your bathtub. Maybe it's even the shower curtain, okay? If it rains, or if you turn on the faucet <coughs> in your shower, where does the rain or water in your shower go eventually? Down to the drain. It goes eventually down to the drain. Where do you think the drain is on this picture? Yeah, that's the yeah, the Chesapeake Bay or the Atlantic Ocean. So basically, if it rains anywhere in this green area, all that water goes down to the bay. That's the idea of the watershed. It's the land and the water that contribute to a body of water. After the net dragging for plankton was pulled in, students got a chance to observe their catch through a microscope. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this bottle and we're going to get a sample from it and put it on this slide here. While some students looked for plankton, others got to touch jellyfish. So how do most fish breathe? They have gills. They have gills. So this guy doesn't have gills. They just take oxygen in through their cells. It'd be like if your mouth and nose were closed, you could breathe through your skin. Push it over the edge here. So just tilt it. Bye, jellyfish. There he goes. Now it was time to dredge for oysters. The exciting part is once we get them back to the boat, there's going to be a pile of oyster and shell. And is that all that's on an oyster reef? No. What else is on an oyster reef? Algae, worms, crabs. Is that what you said? So the, there could be fish. There's lots of other animals that live there. We're going to collect them all with that piece of equipment. When I say he, you say ho! He, ho! He, ho! When I say pull, you say harder! Pull! Harder! Pull! Harder! He, ho! He, ho! As students went through their catch, they learned how to tell if an oyster was alive or dead. If the shell was closed shut, it meant the oyster was alive. If the shell was open, it meant the oyster was dead. Is this one a live oyster? Yes. yes. It is. Now this is actually pretty cool. This is an oyster inside of a dead oyster shell.
which is pretty neat. Now this oh, one, neat. is this one a live or dead one? Dead. Yeah. yeah, so for the dead oysters, guess what you get to do? You get to look at them, oh, see if there's any organisms living on them. And throw it. And if there isn't anything that you really think that's too interesting, you're gonna gently drop it back onto the oyster reef. Yeah. Because that shell could one day be the home for another baby oysters, because baby oysters yeah. like to live on other oyster shells. A net was also put out for catching fish, and it came back with some fish and crabs. He wet his hand. He gently went underneath of the fish. He has a raptor face. Does it look like Christian is squeezing him? No. No, he's gently holding, like a cradle almost. And you can use two hands if you like. And then he just gently lets him go. Give Christian a round of applause. Like from back here. There you go. Perfect. So he can't reach you right there. And awesome. Good job. The instructors had a biodiversity board that listed the different species that were caught that day. Scientists use this method to see how the, the health of rivers, they do it all the time. We'll report this data uh, and hopefully it'll help people understand what's happening in the Patapsco. Yes. As the trip was coming to an end, students were asked what were some of the things they learned on the outing. I learned how to drive a boat. First, you got to turn it, the, in, the engine on, get on the stern wheel, and you, the little lever you can push for how um, faster you can want the boat to go, and then you can just drive. Start recycling more, because when you don't recycle, and some of it just ends out in the bay. It makes the bay un unhealthy. We found out what kind of germs you can get if you swim in the Chesapeake Bay. It was awesome. It was learning about things that not everyone gets to learn about in an everyday setting. Um, just learning about how oysters and fish need to be taken care of just like us as humans need to be taken care of. So we, we got to talk a lot about biodiversity and why we really should care about having a lot of different types of species in the watershed and, and in the bay. Um, you can make a direct connection between the health of the watershed in the bay and the amount of biodiversity. So basically monoculture is bad, one organism is bad, lots of different things living is is great and it's what we want so hopefully that is what the kids take away that there's there's something that they can do every day to impact the health of the bay even if they're only one person so that's that's really the the takeaway message that we're looking for